What's up, YouTube? Hello, fellow Outriders. Today, I'm very excited to bring you all a very in-depth and extensive guide for the ultimate endgame Technomancer. We'll be going over everything about the Technomancer class. However, the build is focused around the Borealis set bonus. This build, with lots of testing, is the best Technomancer build in any scenario. Whether we're playing solo, duos, trios, or hard carries, this build does it all. So, let's get right into it. Starting off with our primary weapon, we have our bread and butter, our 3 burst tactical assault rifle. So why the 3 burst tactical assault rifle? Why not absolute zero or amber vault? The answer is simple and it's that the tactical variant has the highest base damage out of all other assault rifle variants. For reference, standard assault rifles like the absolute zero and double guns like the amber vault have on average 50% less base damage, lower effective range, and less crit damage versus the tactical uh, assault rifle variant. Now I do see the pros to using Absolute Zero and Amber Vault for its larger magazine size. However, 45 magazine size on the tactical assault rifle, once you unlock the top tree class node UT Clips, more on this later, is more than enough ammo in your magazine to keep up your rounds indefinitely. There's just no compromises when it comes to the tactical assault rifle. It's good in every category versus the competition, which includes fire rate, recoil, accuracy, crit damage, and effective range. Quick tip, make sure you are always in the weapon's effective damage range, and this goes for any weapon you decide to use. For the tactical assault rifle variant, the effective weapon damage range is 42 meters. If you are outside of the effective damage range of 42 meters, you will do less damage and you will not be able to crit. You'll get the feel for this range the more you play the game. Moving on to what mods we're going to be running in our primary weapon, they're going to be Bone Shrapnel and Ultimate Freezing Bullets. Now our last build focused on Icebreaker, however with a lot of playtesting, Bone Shrapnel stays the king for its consistency. Rather than needing freeze to be applied, then a kill to proc AoE damage with Icebreaker, Bone Shrapnel only needs that on-kill requirement. So, you may be asking yourself, is Bone Shrapnel really that good? It definitely is, because AoE damage is key in Outriders. Having that AoE clear essentially makes you do more damage, as it provides damage to enemies in a group, and in turn result in faster clear times for your expeditions. Technomancers already do so much single target damage, and stacking more single target damage is counterproductive. Better to shoot one enemy and watch the entire group die than individually shooting one enemy at a time. While I do agree it is super hot to see high single target damage numbers, AoE, definitely hotter. Now, let's go ahead and talk about mod replacements if you do not have a weapon with Bone Shrapnel. The only mod I would recommend as a substitute for this build would be Icebreaker, as it provides similar AoE to Bone Shrapnel at the cost of consistency. Moving on to our secondary mod, we have our T3 Ultimate Freezing Bullets. Now this mod is the most consistent way we have of applying our freeze to any enemy that we shoot, to take advantage of Borealis' insane damage from all sources to enemies that are frozen. That's right, from all sources, and yes, this bonus stacks, so if you have two characters running Borealis, make that 180% damage to enemies that are frozen. You got three, 270% damage from all sources to enemies that are frozen. And yes, you do not have to be a Technomancer running Borealis, as any class can benefit from the set bonus of any legendary set. You want to be a Pyro running Borealis? You can do that. You want to be a Devastator running Borealis? You can do that. You want to be a Trickster running Borealis? You can do that, although from personal testing, it's horrible, so I don't recommend it. Now, for the mods that we can replace Ultimate Freezing Bullets with, I would recommend Dark Sacrifice. While it does provide less consistent high damage because we're not always applying Freeze with Ultimate Freezing Bullets, we do get higher damage when paired with Cold Snap, so it's a good alternative if you do not have the Ultimate Freezing Bullets mod. That being said, T2 Freezing Bullets is also an option. While it provides less consistency than T3 Ultimate Freezing Bullets, at least it's something to apply Freeze, so it's better than nothing. And lastly, we have Winter's Blast. 
However, Winter's Blast is only a recommendation for PC as the mod requires constant crits to apply its AoE freeze, which is similar to Cold Snap. On to our secondary weapon, we will be once again running our 3 burst tactical assault rifle, however this time with ultimate freezing bullets and anomaly enhancement. Now previously we were running T2 freeze with dark sacrifice, however the consistency of T2 freeze was just not there even though you would hit for big numbers with that combination. So we swapped T2 freezing for T3 freezing and swapped dark sacrifice for anomaly enhancement. The main purpose of the secondary weapon is for boss fight situations as it is optimal for single target damage, or if you just feel bored and want to switch it up from time to time. The reason we switch to anomaly enhancement here is that it is the best alternative secondary weapon mod we can now use now that we are using our T3 mod slot for ultimate freezing bullets. Anomaly enhancement provides a passive firepower boost equal to 40% of your anomaly power. Now you may be wondering, isn't this a firepower build? Why do we care about Anomaly? Well, we have two synergies that Anomaly Enhancement can take advantage of in this build with Crit Stack and Grand Amplification. More details on this when we get to it in the rest of the guide. As far as mod replacements go, Anomaly Enhancement is core, so we're definitely keeping that. The same mod replacements for T3 Ultimate Freezing Bullets applies here in the form of Dark Sacrifice, T2 Freeze, and Winter's Blast. Lastly, for our weapons, we have our pistols. Now we just run whatever we want here because we're never going to be using our pistols. So I run the Torment and Agony for, you know, the swag. Let's go ahead and move on to our gear. Remember, the stats we want on all of our purple gear that is not a part of the Borealis 3P set is to always include bonus firepower, close range damage, and long range damage as they are the best stats for a firepower technomancer. Please also remember to upgrade all of the shards on every piece of your gear including your weapons as this will provide free additional stats which will also increase your damage. First, we have our headpiece with the mods Sharp Eye and Radical Therapy. We run Sharp Eye here for its stacking firepower bonus on aim down sights which is also called ADS kills that stacks up to 3 times. We also run Radical Therapy for our secondary mod here as it provides that juicy 15% damage to enemies afflicted by Toxic, which we will have 100% uptime of due to our bread and butter Blighted Rounds ability, which applies Toxic to your bullets. More on this later. Sharp Eye and Radical Therapy are both core mods here, so we will not be using any replacements. Let's go ahead and move on to our chest piece for this build, which is going to utilize the Robe of the Borealis Monarch, Set piece 1 out of the 3 we are going to use for the amazing set bonus that Borealis provides, which is 90% damage from all sources to enemies that are frozen and 10% increased crit damage for 8 seconds after using Cold Snap for you and your party members. The mods we are using on this chest piece are going to be Icicle Storm, which has a nice AoE synergy with Cold Snap and Crit Stack. Icicle Storm is another great AoE tool we have at our disposal to take out elites surrounded by a group of adds, or a large group of adds. Icicle Storm deals 250,000 damage in a 5 meter radius that explodes for enemies that are frozen. This explosion is a chain reaction, so as long as you kill one enemy, Icicle Storm will chain the 250k damage to all enemies within that 5 meter radius, which is hot. With our Borealis set bonus, we can tack another 90% increase in this damage as well. Absolutely insane. Now earlier, I had mentioned that we are going to have a bit of synergy with Anomaly Enhancement on our secondary tactical assault rifle. Well, one of those synergies is Crit Stack. Not only does Crit Stack provide a firepower boost on crits that stacks up to 5 times, providing more damage than Dum Dum Bullets, it also gives you an AP boost that stacks up to 5 times, which 40% of that will get converted to firepower thanks to Anomaly Enhancement on our secondary rifle. So let's go ahead and do some quick maths using Sharp Eye as an example. When we have Sharp Eye fully stacked, we get a total of 48,267 firepower. When we have Crit Stack fully stacked for firepower, we get 38,615 firepower. Alternatively, Crit Stack's full stack for anomaly power comes to 21,155 anomaly power. 
Now remember with anomaly enhancement, 40% of that anomaly power will be converted into firepower, bringing us an additional 8,462 firepower. Now, if we add those totals together, Quitstack's total firepower now comes to 47,077 firepower, matching a fully stacked sharp eye when using our anomaly enhancement assault rifle. I included this information here. If you ever run into the situation where you may need to run either crit stack or sharp eye on your gear when utilizing that anomaly enhancement AR. Moving forward, Icicle Storm is a core mod here, so we will not be swapping this out. However, even though crit stack is also a core mod, we can swap it out if it does not fit your playstyle, as hitting crits can be difficult, especially on console. Please note that this will reduce the effectiveness of your anomaly enhancement rifle if crit stack is not present. You can go ahead and replace crit stack with the following mods. Dum Dum Bullets, which provides immediate damage and is a little bit better for solo play. Splash Boost, which provides more AoE damage but less single target damage. You can also go a defensive mod like Preservation Shield, Damage Absorber, Mitigation of Death. Quick note about Mitigation of Death, however, it works, but it is not recommended to use alongside crit stack due to an interaction making crit stack not work consistently if both mods are present. Next, another replacement is Aura Force, which I decided to include even though it is a bit niche and only used for speed running. But I thought I would mention it here anyways. Primarily, we use Aura Force to buff our pyro so they can full clear and as a bonus, it also actually provides us with additional anomaly power that gets converted into firepower due to Aura Force giving us additional anomaly power on crit kills. Second to last, we have Trick Up the Sleeve as another mod replacement for crit stack. So why Trick Up the Sleeve? While we do have an ammo on kill mod with Toxic Lead in this build, which we will get to in our boots, Trick Up the Sleeve is core mod to replace crit stack with when you are playing off host. When you are playing off host in this game, there is a desync issue where anytime you shoot enemies with blighted rounds, sometimes the toxic will not apply before the kill, making the toxic lead mod inconsistent as it only gives you ammo back on kills for enemies inflicted with toxic. However, applying both toxic lead and trick up the sleeve solves this issue off host and consistently provides you ammo back on kills as Trick Up the Sleeve provides an additional 30% ammo back on kills without needing Toxic being afflicted as a requirement. So if you are playing off host on Technomancer, please use both Trick Up the Sleeve and Toxic Lead. Last and definitely least, we have Spare Mag. This is not something I would personally recommend to run as a replacement for Crit Stack because Trick Up the Sleeve is just that much better overall. However, Spare Mag can help you out if you feel like you're struggling to keep rounds solo or as host in a group setting. If you're losing rounds due to not getting a kill, it is worth it to swap to Spare Mag to keep maximum uptime of Blighted Rounds. Let's go ahead and move on to our Wastecloth of the Borealis Monarch, which are our pants. Set piece 2 out of 3 for the Borealis Monarch set. The two mods we're going to be running here are going to be Bloodlust, for the same reason we like Sharp Eye, because it is a great firepower stacking mod. And we're going to keep the mod that comes on these pants, which is Freezing Boost, as it gives 15% more damage to enemies afflicted by Freeze. These are both core mods, and I do not recommend any replacements. Transitioning to our gloves, which is one of the harder set pieces to find for Robo the Borealis Monarch, and will complete our three-piece set. The mods we're going to be running on these gloves are Captain Hunter, which provides 25% damage to elites, and Shatter, which comes on the gloves, which provides 25% damage to enemies afflicted by freeze, so a better freezing boost. Quick tip, Alpha Preferos also count as elites and benefit from the Captain Hunter bonus. Again, both of these mods are core to this build, and I do not recommend any other replacements. The last piece of our gear, we have our boots where we are running Euthanizer and Toxic Lead. Euthanizer being a better version of Radical Therapy, providing another additional 25% damage on enemies afflicted with Toxic. And Toxic Lead providing us with that 40% ammo on kills to enemies that are also afflicted by Toxic, which is how we keep our infinite blighted rounds. These are once again core mods and I do not recommend any replacements. Just another quick reminder to utilize both Trick Up the Sleeve and Toxic Lead when you are off host until the desync issues get resolved. 
Now that we've gone ahead and completed the weapons, mods, and gear section of this guide, let's go ahead and move on to the skills we'll be utilizing. The first skill we're going to be using here is Cold Snap. Cold Snap provides an AoE freeze in a large radius that has amazing synergy with our Borealis Set bonus coupled with Icicle Storm. Not only is it a great defensive tool, but with Icicle Storm provides great AoE damage. More on this a little bit later. Moving to our second skill that we'll be using, it's our bread and butter, Blighted Rounds. Blighted Rounds fills your current weapons magazine with decay charged rounds that inflict toxic onto enemies. Enemies within a small radius of the main target also receive toxic and 50% of the splash damage. Blighted rounds will last until you reload or switch weapons. Remember all the toxic synergies we have on our gear? It's all thanks to blighted rounds that we're able to spec so heavily into those synergies. Free toxic application that has 100% uptime as long as you're good with keeping your infinite rounds is amazing to have. You'll see when we move to the class tree section how much more toxic synergies we'll be able to stack on thanks to blighted rounds. Quick tip. Blighted Rounds also ignores enemy armor. Our last skill we're going to be running with this build is going to be Blighted Turret. Blighted Turret deploys a turret that inflicts toxic onto enemies. However, the main reason we run Blighted Turret is to take advantage of our Empowering Antenna class node, which will provide an additional 40% weapon damage anytime we use the skill for us and our party members. More on this in just a moment. Moving on from our skills, let's head over to our class tree. Let's go ahead and start with our class passive, which goes unlooked at times. It's extremely strong. As Technomancers, we have three class passives. The first one being that we passively have a 15% damage boost when we are in long range, which is 18 meters and beyond by default. More on this in just a little bit as well. The next class passive we have is that our skill leech is increased by 15%. With our current firepower build, this one won't be as beneficial to us as the only skill we are using here that can utilize this is our Blighted Turret. And the heal you get back from Blighted Turret is not consistent as we only use Blighted Turret for its 40% damage increase as I mentioned earlier, and again, more on this in just a little bit. Moving on to our last class passive is what makes Technomancers be able to do so much damage but still have great survivability. We have one of the strongest class passives for survival, increasing our weapon leech by 15%. You know how people say that the best defense is a great offense? Couldn't be more truer for Technomancers here as any time we use our weapon and deal damage to an enemy, we receive health back. 15% of our weapon leech we receive as health. This class passive is the second reason, Cold Snap being the first, why we do not run a defensive mod in our preferred build, as the 15% weapon leech is insane, and coupled with Cold Snap, more than enough defense you need, and you can fully focus and utilize those offensive mods. Now that we've gone ahead and covered all three of the class passives, let's move on to the class tree. We will be focusing on the top tree Pestilence as it is by far the strongest top tree of any class due to the amazing synergies this tree has for damage output. It's kind of insane, so let's get right into it. The first node we're going to be focusing on here is BR8 Impact Amplifier, which increases our weapon damage by 8%. This is perfect for us as we love more damage as Technomancer. Next, we have a choice between Suction Module which increases our weapon leech by additional 5%, or Sower of Decay, which reduces our Blighted Rounds and Turret cooldown by 15%. We definitely choose Suction Module here, as having an extra 5% weapon leech brings our total weapon leech to 20%. So why don't we go with Sower of Decay? As this is an infinite rounds build, the goal is never to lose Blighted Rounds, so it doesn't make sense to run Sower of Decay for that additional 15% of cooldown that you get back if you ever lose Blighted Rounds and for your Blighted Turret as well. The Blighted Turret that we'll be using in this build already has a cooldown of 7.1 seconds, so you're always going to have the maximum uptime of the weapon damage bonus Blighted Turret provides while using the Empowering Antenna node. Again, more on this in just a moment. 
The next node we're going to be taking is drill coding. We don't have a choice here, but we do need to take it to continue to the further nodes that exist for this tree. The reason we're not too happy about taking drill coding is that blighted rounds when active already ignores enemy armor, so this is a useless stat for us. Moving along, we're going to go ahead and take the next node, which is BLSTM Havoc Nexus. This node increases our critical damage by 15%. We love that. More damage, we'll always take it. Next, we're going to go ahead and go down to Exposing Toxic, which provides the vulnerable status to enemies anytime Toxic is afflicted. Since we afflict Toxic damage 100% of the time without Blighted Rounds as well as our Blighted Turret, we gain an additional 15% damage due to the vulnerable status. The next node we're going to be moving on to is Marked for Execution, which makes Vulnerable Afflicted on an enemy become 40% more effective. So what does this mean? This basically means that 40% of effectiveness of the 15% damage increase we receive from the vulnerable status comes up to 6%. Basically, this node adds an additional 6% damage when enemies are vulnerable, which is again all the time, bringing up our total vulnerable damage to now 21%. Nice, we love our damage boosts. Heading back to the top part of our nodes, we now have a choice between Nitrogen Capsule, which decreases the distance considered to be long range by 3 meters, or Toxicologist, which basically makes Toxic last 30% longer. We 100% choose Nitrogen Capsules here, because remember earlier how I mentioned default long range being 15 meters and above? Well, with this node, it decreases what is considered to be long range for Technomancers from 18 meters to 15 meters and above. Basically meaning that we are now allowed to be closer to an enemy and still deal all of our long range damage bonuses. This is super helpful as a lot of the times enemies will W key to us as well as we also W keying to the enemies themselves. So being able to utilize our long range damage bonuses closer is a huge win. Toxicologist is very pointless here because Toxic already lasts more than long enough for us to utilize all the damage bonuses we get from Toxic being applied to our enemies. Moving along with our class node, we're going to go ahead and take another BR8 impact amplifier here. Again, we don't have a choice, but this is a good one. Another increase to our weapon damage by 8% is hot and we'll take it. For the next two nodes, we're going to be taking both nitrogen capsules and purge. Our second nitrogen capsule here is going to decrease our already decreased long range by another 3 meters, bringing what is considered to be long range from Technomancers from 15 meters to 12 meters and above. Now we can even be closer to enemies and still take advantage of all of our long range damage bonuses. Purge is a no brainer here as it increases our damage dealt to enemies afflicted by Toxic by another 10%. Awesome. Once again, moving to our next node, we're forced to take another BR-8 impact amplifier. However, we're not going to complain here because another 8% increase to our weapon damage, we're going to be more than happy with that. Absolutely zero complaints. Moving up one node, we're going to go ahead and take Assault Master. This one is very self-explanatory. This is perfect for us since we are primarily going to be using our assault rifles. And this node provides an additional 20% damage increase to assault rifle weapon damage. More damage, great, we love to see it. For the next two nodes, we have a choice between Assault Adept or Sniper Adept. The choice here is really easy. Since we're not focusing on anything Sniper, we're going to go ahead and stick with Assault Adept to gain another increase to our assault weapon damage by 12%. I hope you guys are seeing all these synergies stacking on this top tree so far, because honestly, the amount of damage stacking as well as toxic stacking we get is huge. Unfortunately, the next node we're going to be forced to take is another drill coating, so we have to take this node, we're going to complain about it, but it is what it is. Going down one, we actually have a pretty interesting node here called Two Sides of the Power. We take 15% more damage from all sources, but in return, we deal 20% damage from all sources. We 100% take this. 15% increased damage that we take from all sources does kind of look pretty bad on paper, but remember, we have a total of 20% weapon leech that we get from our class passive and the 5% node we took from suction module. 
which more than makes up for the 15% damage that we take. In return, we also get to deal an additional 20% damage from all sources to enemies, which is huge. Sign me the fuck up. The next node that we are forced to take here is a node called Sharpshooter. But wow, is it damn good. Sharpshooter gives us an additional 30% increase to our long range weapon damage, combined with our class passive, brings our total long range weapon damage to 45%. This is why being in long range is so important. We gain an additional 45% increase in damage just by being in long range, which we've established is 12 meters and above. Absolutely insane. Just like with your weapon's effective range, you'll get the feel of this the more you play. Moving forward, the next node we're taking is Grand Amplification. Grand Amplification provides us with an increase in our anomaly power by 4% for each unlocked BR-8 impact amplifier node. Since we have a total of 3 unlocked BR-8 impact amplifier nodes, we gain a total of 12% anomaly power. This is synergy number 2 for why we run anomaly enhancement on our secondary weapon. Moving along, we now have another node that we are forced to run, but another amazing node at that in UT14 Clips, which increases our magazine size by 50%. This is huge! It takes our 30 magazine size for our tactical assault rifle and increases it to 45, which helps immensely in keeping up our infinite rounds. As we're nearing the end of our class tree, we now have a choice between either charged gunshot or purge. We're definitely not taking charged gunshot because this is useless as it requires you to reload and this build is all about never reloading to keep infinite blighted rounds so we 100% take purge which is basically a free radical therapy on our class tree as it provides an additional 15% more damage to enemies afflicted with toxic. Cool. We'll fucking take it. And lastly, but Definitely not least, we have the final node in the Pestilence Tree, which is Empowering Antenna. This node provides you and your allies with an additional 40% weapon damage anytime you use Blighted Rounds or Blighted Turret, and this buff lasts for 10 seconds. Now, we don't care much for the 40% damage we get for our weapon damage while activating Blighted Rounds with this node. We're more focused on our Blighted Turret as it is amazing for our turret. As I mentioned earlier, with this build, Blighted Turret is at a 7.1 second cooldown, while the 40% increase in weapon damage buff applies for 10 seconds. What does this mean? This means that the cooldown for the turret comes up faster than the 10 second damage buff window, which results in 100% uptime of weapon damage buff. Absolutely, I'm going to say it again, insane. Now before we finish with the class tree section, I wanted to provide another quick tip. If you have two Technomancers in a party, make sure one of the Technomancers is using Scrapnel for the skill instead of Blighted Turret alongside the node Cannonade instead of Empowering Antenna. Now Cannonade provides you and your allies with an additional 30% weapon damage for 10 seconds anytime you use Scrapnel. So why do we use Scrapnel instead of Pain Launcher? or Tools of Destruction? Well, the simple reason is that Scrapnel is on the lowest cooldown. So what that means is you'll be able to take advantage of the Cannonade node for that 30% increase in weapon damage for you and your allies for that much longer because of the cooldown that Scrapnel has. So you may be asking, why don't we just have two Technomancers just run Blighted Turret and both use Empowering Antenna? Well, simply put, these buffs don't stack. So if you have two Technomancers that both have Empowering Tenna and they're running Blighted Turret, you only benefit from 40% of the weapon damage for you and your allies. So you don't get 80%. So that's why we use Cannonade, because the 30% increase in weapon damage that you and your allies receive will work alongside Empowering Antenna for a massive 70% weapon damage for 10 seconds when both skills are activated. Hot. All of the general information I have provided in this guide is valid for any type of firepower technomancer build. However, our main focus was utilizing the Borealis set, as in my opinion, it is now the go-to choice for technomancers. Now, that doesn't mean that the Borealis build doesn't have any cons, but let's start with some of the pros. For pro number one, 
for using the Borealis set build, it is simply put, freeze. Freezing an enemy to make hitting their crit spots extremely easy is always going to be beneficial as that is more damage output. For a second pro, simply put one word, Borealis. 90% damage to enemies that are frozen, and as mentioned earlier, stacking with each party member wearing the set for a total of 270% damage to enemies that are frozen is insane. The third pro that we have for this build is single target damage. Even though you're not focusing on a pure single target damage build, because we love our AoE and our AoE mods, the single target damage you do to elites without stacking your mods, sharp eye, bloodless, and crit stack is very nice with this build. The fourth pro that we have is damage without blighted rounds. While we do do our maximum damage with blighted rounds up, if you do happen to lose blighted rounds, it's not the end of the world as we still do decent damage to enemies without blighted, again thanks to how overpowered Borealis is with that set bonus. Looking at the last pro for the Technomancer, this is not revolved around the Borealis build, but just as a Technomancer class in whole. With the amazing synergy we have with our mods, our skills, our class passive, and our class 3 nodes, all other classes really fails into comparison at how synergistic everything works out when you're playing Firepower Technomancer. Now, it's not all fun and dandy playing with the Borealis set, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the cons you can experience when playing with this build specifically. The first con we're going to focus on is Borealis still seems to be a little inconsistent at times. If you ever notice your damage being lower than normal, simply just unequip and re-equip the set and you should be good to go. For a second con, we're going to focus more on Freeze. Freeze is really inconsistent on monster maps due to Alpha Perforos and Brood Mothers. They have an ability called Absorbing Skin which if they activate, say goodbye to your freeze damage bonuses as they become immune to effect resistance. While it's still a great build to run on monster maps, do be aware of Alpha Perforos and Brood Mothers. Other monster enemy types usually are not a problem. Fuck the birds. The final con we'll experience when playing with this build once again comes back to freeze. Freeze is a crowd control status and can be easily broken via the game's effect resistance mechanic. This makes elites become status resisted, which the game calls effect resistance, the more crowd control statuses you and your team procs on that elite or a group of elites. Be aware of this as it will end up making them immune to freeze and all other crowd control statuses like ash and slow. Because of this, we will take a huge damage hit when elites are in the immunity stage. If you're curious about this, you can find more information in the in-game guide. Now that we've completed our pros and cons section, let's go ahead and move to the tips and tricks section on playing Technomancer. This won't be too extensive, but will help players increase the class's efficiency. For our first tips and tricks, we're going to go ahead and look at tapping our assault rifle versus holding our assault rifle. Earlier, I mentioned that our Tactical Burst Assault Rifle is great in every category, including fire rate. Now you would think that the standard Assault Rifle would be better in this category, but you can't even tell the difference if you get your tap timing down just right. Let's take a look. The first example we're going to look at is when we're holding the gun versus tapping the gun. You can see from that example that the fire rate is what you would expect from a burst gun. However, you can also see that the recoil is increasing after every hold burst, lowering our overall accuracy with the gun. Now let's take a look at what it looks like and the benefits we gain when we tap versus hold and when we get that tap timing down just right. As you just saw, once you get that tap timing down, not only has the fire rate increased to match that of the standard assault rifle, however, our recoil does not change and our accuracy stays accurate as fuck. Practice makes perfect here. For our second tips and trick, we're going to be focusing on the cold snap and the blighted turret combo. So what does this mean? 
Well, if you use Cold Snap and then immediately drop Blighted Turret while moving, you can do a nice little animation cancel, which saves you a bit of time, but most importantly, it looks fucking cool. As you just saw, when we do that combo of moving a little bit while casting Cold Snap and Blighted Turret, how seamless that animation is. Now let's take a look at what it looks like when you do it the other way around, where you pop a Blighted Turret and then Cold Snap. Did you guys notice that? How less of a seamless experience it was dropping Blighted Turret then Cold Snap. We actually had to wait for Blighted Turret to finish casting before being able to use our Cold Snap ability. Now that Cold Snap Blighted Turret combo doesn't apply all the time, but there are certain situations in certain maps where it's very beneficial, and I'll let you guys figure that out, because as always, practice makes perfect. Moving on to our third tips and trick is one of my favorites, which is the Cold Snap and Icicle Storm value. In many maps, you'll have spawns of a lot of enemies that have adds spawning with elites, or just a shit ton of adds. Once you familiarize yourself with the map and know the spawn layouts, this is when the combo becomes extremely fun to use. Here are some examples. I hope you guys enjoyed those examples. Now, did you see in some of those examples how I didn't focus the elites? Instead, I focused the ads slash ads around the elites. Since Icicle Storm provides that amazing AoE chain damage, killing one ad will result in the chain damage affecting all other enemies within that five meter radius. Rather than shooting three to four bursts on an elite, you can simply shoot an ad and watch everything around it die. This is a bit more consistent in solo rather than duos and trios since the enemy's HP pool is much lower. But that being said, still a fantastic combo to use when playing in duos, 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 and in trios. Moving along, let's go ahead and take a look at our fourth tips and trick. This one is very simple and that's to stay in long range. This one is pretty self-explanatory, and I won't be providing an example for this one, as you'll get the feel for long range as you play the game, similar to your gun's effective range. Looking at our fifth tips and tricks, we have a very simple one again, and that's to stack your firepower mods. It's always important to make sure you maximize your damage output by stacking Sharp Eye, Bloodlust, and Chris Stack. No example here again, as this is very straightforward. Finally, for our sixth and final tip, we have a very basic one in ammo management. The key to having an infinite rounds build is to make sure you keep an eye on your ammo. We do this by focusing on ad management. Basically, keep ads alive to restock on ammo if you see it running low when focusing on elites. This will take some practice, but will become natural after putting in the time. Once again, no example here. You'll need to practice this so it becomes second nature. Hey everybody. We covered a lot here. To anyone that stuck around to the end, thank you very much, and I hope that you now have a better understanding on how to fully min-max the Technomancer class and the output that Technomancers are capable of. A lot of people always ask me on my stream how I'm able to do the damage I do so consistently on Technomancer, and I hope that this guide gives you all a better understanding on how to achieve this. The build graphic for this build using Boz's Outriders Outpost app is in the description, so make sure to check that out as a general tool. I want to thank the homies Dawson, a dude with a blunt, Mephine, and Pomerons for providing their insight into this guide. As always, thank you again and feel free to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. You can also catch me daily while I'm streaming at twitch.tv slash Bear. I usually start around 7pm Pacific Standard Time every single day. Peace.